Facebooks, the Instagrams, YouTubes, all the good stuff. Steve says episode number 107. Today, we are going to be, I'm going to be sharing the, my stories, the, the thoughts, the lessons learned, the breakthroughs that I had during our 24-hour hike fundraiser for charity this weekend. It was a brutal, brutal adventure. I got you on all different cameras. I'll try to keep up with your messages as we're going along here. So I want to start off here with a question before we kick things off, give you a chance to get logged in here and stuff. I want to ask you, do you know the magic that occurs during pain, suffering, adversity, hardship, and extreme challenge? Do you know it? Have you, have you ever experienced it? There is something special in that. There's a fucking magic in that that occurs when all that happens. It's almost a prerequisite for success because, listen, no great success or victory has ever come without a significant level of pain, suffering, adversity, and challenge. That's just the way it is, along with hardship, however else you want to talk about it and word it. So... That's what we're talking about. Steve says, you know, is always not what you want to hear, but it is definitely the shit that you need to freaking hear. This is, uh, uh, you know, some people will hate, but most can relate to what we're talking about. We are bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. This week's episode, we're going to talk about that pain, suffering, hardship, the types of lessons. What specific lessons did I learn? What were my big breakthroughs and takeaways from the from the 24-hour hike? I want to ask you, how how do you... How do you think of yourself when you're by yourself? This is some of the stuff you, that you really go through, these deep reflections that you have when you're in these crazy sufferings and hardships that are going on. So how do you think of yourself when you are by yourself? Some serious stuff there to think about. I'm just going to adjust one of these cameras here so I can see the messages a little better here on the Instagrams. I'll put you right here. There we go. Much better. So... Also, I want to ask you, how much time do you spend on reflection? How much time do you spend on creation? It's, it's, it's some crazy stuff, but what do you do? How much time do you spend on this stuff? On creating, creating things, creating experiences, on reflection. Some serious stuff. Also, I want to ask you, do you really know who the fuck you really are, like truly are deep down to the bone, to the core. Do you know who the fuck you are? And do you know what you're truly capable of? Like what is your true potential? Do you know these things? And yes, freak, look at this shirt. Check that out. Got it from a project graduate, gave me his gift, actually brought it to the 24-hour hike. He showed up there with his son, Isaac, one of the graduate of class 007 of the project. So before we kick this off, before I go into the lessons of what is learned in the suffering and the hardship and the sacrifice. Just to break it down, as you know, each week here on Steve Says, this is a live show on how to have a no excuses, badass mindset guiding you to adapt and overcome and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances, so you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own motherfucking terms. Steve Says focuses on the mind, the body, and your business in that order, specifically in that order. It's about having a role model mindset so you can operate to dominate with discipline, with energy, with confidence. You could take massive action, make bold moves, take risks, and be your freak self. This is what it's all about. It's a peak freak perspective on personal development, positive mindset, health, and fitness. This is what we are talking about. And let's let's jump into it. Let's get into it. So the 24-hour hike, this thing was... Crazy. It was nuts. We've done several 24-hour challenges already. And I'll tell you, this one was harder than the 24-hour push-up challenge. This was harder than the, the 24-hour weightlifting challenge. This was harder than the 24-hour bike ride. Because it was a hike. It wasn't just a walk. There were hills. I'll have to pull up the numbers. Oh, it's on the phone. Shoot, I didn't even, I didn't even calculate the numbers here for the mileage. I'm going to pull it up. I think it might screw up our Instagram feed, though. Anyway, the amount of mileage between Saturday and Sundays, we started Saturday at noon all the way till Sunday at noon. So Saturday, more fresh, there was 56,000 steps taken and 180 something flights climbed. That's some serious shit. Then Sunday was another 42 to 44,000 steps taken 
and another 130 flights climbed. For a total of 13 laps of over, it's about somewhere between 3.2 and, and three, or maybe 3.3 miles per lap at 13 laps. So you could do the math. That's over 40 freaking miles of hiking in 24 hours. 40 miles of hiking in over in, in 24 hours. It, it's free, it was freaking nuts. And let's tell you, I only did 13 laps. So the first lesson here, a huge, big, major lesson to, to take home here was, and this was my challenge that I created, and I did less laps. A bunch of the people there did either 13 and a half or 14 laps. You have to subdue your ego. You have to cut your ego. I did less laps than, than other people that were there because there came to a point where one of the, the freak little kids that were there with us, yes, a 10-year-old and a 7-year-old did it with us. Another group, Padre graduate son did it with us. The little midget needed to take a little rest in the middle of the night. At like by 2 a.m., I think she finally crashed out at like 2 a.m. after hiking whatever amount of miles. She did over 20-something miles at 7 years old. Tyson did only two laps less than me. So do the math on that. That's, that's 11 laps over 35 miles or something like that. One of the laps, the, the Russian was sitting there watching the kids. They were sleeping, so she had to stay with them. We, they were out down in the car. We had our base station set up, our camp set up down at the bottom. So I had to, I asked if she wanted me to watch the kids so she could get a lap in because she missed like two laps in a row or three laps in a row and it's going to fuck up her challenge and not get the full effect. And I had to ask myself, I said, you know what? If I sit out this one lap and let me, I'll tell you the truth too. Another thing is not, not high, uh, I'll get to that in a second, but is being vulnerable and showing the truth, showing the real life shit. Not the fucking bullshit you see on the motherfucking Instagram. It's a real life shit. Not being afraid to talk about shit that goes sideways or shit that goes wrong. Like sitting out for that lap, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't that upset about being able to sit out a lap at whatever time that was, four in the morning. Except I almost shit my pants during that time. We'll get into that in a second too. Anyway, so I had to. Th- I had to say, all right, if I'm gonna sit and watch, stay with the kids here while they're sleeping for this lap, I'm gonna fall a lap behind the group, right? We were all, for the most part, staying together on a lapse at least. During the walk, during the hiking, we'd be spread out in little mini groups because we all want to set at different paces, but we would all reset at the bottom and start each lap pretty much at the same time. So I knew if I sat out a lap, I was going to do less. This is my fucking challenge. Mr. Marine, Mr. Peak Physique, all this other stuff. And I was going to have to say, all right, it's late in the game. There's not that much time left. There's only a few hours left. My knees are both fucking jacked at this point. Got a broken fucking toe. It's going to be hard for me to make up a lap if I sit out this lap. But I figured the Russian wanted to do it. Plus a little sunset was coming up. You know how fucking girls like to see their little pictures and little selfagrams and all this other shit. Of the little sunrise. Or no, the sunrise is coming up. Sunset, sunrise, whatever the fuck it is. I don't know. But figured she might want to take some pictures of that. It's actually talking about it. So I said, fuck it. Go. I'll sit out this lap. I ain't going to complain. Actually, the worst thing to do was sitting out for that. Lap fucking fucked my legs up by sitting there for so long. Just locked them up. But anyway, knowing that, listen, if I do this, I'm going to fall a lap behind. It's going to be damn fucking hard to now catch up a lap. It means I won't get a recovery after one of the laps. I'll have to just turn straight back around. And at that point, it's fucking hobble. It's a hobble fest. It's walking like an old fucking man, crippling a crippled old man walking up those fucking steps. We're going to get to all that. But the, so the first lesson was there's shit bigger than yourself. Subdue your fucking ego. Kill your fucking ego. You need an ego at some point, but you have to you have to know how to control that motherfucker and realize it wasn't just about me and doing more laps than anyone else or even not even doing the same laps. That I'm going to have to willing to accept the fact that I'm going to have to say I did less laps than the other guys there. Graduates of the project. So I put through the project. I put through this suffering. I'm doing it with them. And they did more laps than me. Think about that. I had to be willing to do that. But that was the next lesson. Sometimes you got to think about other shit other than yourself. It wasn't about me. This was a fundraiser, first of all. It was about hiking for 24 hours. It wasn't about how many laps you can get. It wasn't a competition. Of course, you try to make everything a competition. You want to fucking win at everything. But sometimes you got to fucking eat one. Sometimes you got to take one for the fucking team. And sometimes the team is the family. Those guys were cruising. They were all set. They were good. They were going. The Russian was stuck behind. I had to say, all right, I'm going to fucking have to... These guys who I was torturing, some of them just graduated a month ago in September. 
And now I'm inviting them to my challenge. My freak fucking challenge. Suffering fucking. And I'm going to do less than them. I did less than them. I ended up doing a lap less or a half lap less than, than most of the people there. And that's something I had to be willing to accept. Because then I ran out of time and I would not have been able to finish the lap in time. And I actually had a second chance to do that. The final lap, there was still some time. I could have made it up. A second chance after, I could have made up this lap. I'm a lap behind. I, I took a very short break, went to another lap, got one in with Tyson. And then said, you know what? We we, we could go as a, a, a freak family, the four of us. And you know, most of the time, we're going at different paces. Half the time, it was me and Tyson alone. Sometimes I'm alone by myself. Sometimes just with the project guys. Rarely will we all together as a freak family. Just four of us for an entire full beginning to end lap. And I said, you know what? This last lap, although I can go off, I still had some... You always have more in the tank. That's going to be the next lesson. But I still had in complete fucking stiff and fucking pain and all this other shit, suffering pain. I still could have gotten another lap in. But I said, you know what? I've, it's not. A, I'm going to go and what? And go and doing this and finishing myself. We started as a freak family. We're going to finish it. So the four of us, we went at our own pace, had some fun, screwing around, cracking jokes at ourselves about how fucked up we were and started the final lap together and finished the final lap together. So that was my second chance that I had that I could have caught up to the other guys and, and finished with the same amount of laps because we went out that last lap we went, the four of us was slow as fuck because we stayed together and said, you know what? This is how, I told myself in my head, this is how I'm going to finish this fucking thing. I'm going to finish this thing with this freak of family. I, we got, I got the project grads this far. They don't need me at this point. I'm going to let them fucking fly. They're going to end up with more than me. And I'm okay with that. You need to kill your fucking ego. Subdue your fucking ego. And, and some of those laps, there was a couple of times I was by myself for a good amount of time because you're with one group, you catch up to the forward group, you go, I go back and check on the back group. I'm trying to make sure everyone's good, everyone's safe. It's the middle of the fucking night. People are stiff and sore. We can't leave any man behind. People start drifting and fading. So I'm kind of moving back and forth, trying to keep track of everyone. A couple of times I get stuck by myself in the middle of the fucking night, walking for about 45 minutes. Like, fuck, if I go down, no one's even going to know it. But sometimes you got to go out alone. You got to be, there's a saying I have some here, here, right here. If it's worth, no, that ain't it. Oh, fuck. If it's worth, that one says if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. That's a, that's a fact too. It's right there. You, some of those cameras can see it. If it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. This other one, I'm going to knock all these fucking books over on this bookshelf. says be strong enough to stand alone, smart enough to know when you need help, and brave enough to ask for it. That's some serious shit right there. People, some, some, some I guarantee a lot of the men out there will read this like, oh, they'll think that's weak or that's a bitch. You know what's a bitch? Is the motherfuckers that don't think like this and, and, and think they could do it all by themselves. And they just sit there and suffer in silence and get all passive aggressive little pr- approval seeking little bitches. And think they're going to do all their own because they're Billy badass and they have this, the massive ego that's not subdued. They have zero control of it. Those are not the badasses. Those are the bitch asses. We talked about that last week. And sometimes you got to go alone. Sometimes you have to go together. Sometimes you need help. Sometimes you have to ask for help. Sometimes you have to give help. Sometimes you have to offer help. Sometimes you have to take a fucking beating. To lift someone else up. To help someone else out. Sometimes you have to get less fucking laps. Less work in your own fucking challenge that you started. You created. In order to feel like to do what you feel like is the right thing to do at that point. And getting together with the family and finishing the final lap. That was the fucking win. We've had it at the Squire program. We've had competitions with the fathers and sons. And there's some things that you have to work as a team. And, and, it's, it, and we tell them it pays to be a winner. It's, it's a race. The father and sons, there's all of them against each other at the same time. They're filling up sandbags. They're breaking stuff. They're running with kettlebells and all kinds of stuff across the field. You'll see some groups of fathers and sons with the dad doing all the work because he wants to win. He wants to show his son it's all about winning. You want to win, son. He does all the digging. He does all the sledgehammer work. He fills a sandbag. He carries both sandbags running with the kid, yelling at the kid to come along, and the kid did fuck all for the entire challenge. And they win. They're first place. The fucking winners! Then there's another group. Father and son. The son's doing almost everything. It's hard. Sledgehammer's a little sloppy. 
The dad takes it, shows him how to use the sledgehammer properly, how to step, how to turn his hips, how to switch his grip, how to keep his posture right so he doesn't hurt his lower back. Shows him how to dig the hole, how to get the foot to stomp in, the angle to go in, the way to change the shovel to get a little better leverage on it, on the E-tool. He gives the kid one bag, he takes the other bag. They're both suffering with carrot running with the bags together. They come in last place. Who's the winner there? Who's the fucking winner there? To me, that last place team is the motherfucking winner. It's all about that experience. The, if, if, it's all about the fucking journey. What did they get from that? They've got so much more growth and experience and development out of that than the team that the two that actually won. Of course, you want to win when it comes to shit, but it's about doing the shit the right way, right? And and it's about that fucking journey. It's about the lessons, the skills that you're developing. That's what the purpose of that thing was. Some things, that is the purpose. Sometimes, Some things, the outcome is the fucking journey. The purpose is the journey. The reward is the fucking path. Not the outcome. The outcome is just the bonus. The outcome is just the aftermath of whatever's going on. So those, these, these are just all things. Learning, stewing, going through the head while, while I'm suffering step after step. And I'll tell you, some of those things dragging fucking ass. Dragging ass. That inner bitch speaks to you and starts talking in your fucking head all the time. And, and, and then you realize you always have one more to give. We finished that final lap with the family. And I said to Tyson, I'm like, you think you can do that again? And he's like, no, I don't think, I don't think I could do it again. Can you do one more lap? I don't even think so. And then he pauses. He's like, actually, I could. I could. It'll suck, but I could. I said, you think you could do another 24 hours right now straight through? He said, no. And then he paused. He said, you know what? Yeah, I can. It'll flip and suck. But I could do it if I had to. There's always more in the tank. You always have more to give. When you think you're done, fucking death, murder, and destruction, fucking the end, the finish line, you always have fucking more to give. You always have more in the fucking tank. It's just you're being a little fucking bitch in your head thinking, oh my God, it hurts. Oh, I got little blisters on my feet. My fucking knees are hurting. I'm fucking dragging ass. I'm dehydrated. I'm tired. I'm sore. I haven't slept. You always have so much more to fucking give. You always have another fucking lap. There's always one more fucking lap you could do. What's going to stop you? What the fuck is going to stop you? Death? All right. Fucking so be it. Then we'll be doing laps in hell with the fucking devil, motherfucker. There's always more in the tank. There's always another lap. No matter how fucking bad it is. These fucking vessels that we have of chunks of meat and fucking blood and goop inside are meant to do a fucking lot. Meant to take a beating. You're fucking disrespecting it by not making it do that shit. Not fucking pushing it to the limits all the fucking time. That's why we do Suffering Saturdays every Saturday. That's what it's all about. Next lesson. Big lesson was to Go back to the fucking basics. Don't get complacent. Don't skip over the basics. Because you know what we didn't do? We didn't stretch before we started. We didn't warm up before we started. We didn't do any foam rolling. No stretching at all. We had a checklist, a group checklist of things that we need to make sure we had done and brought. We, we had the checklist, but we just thought we had it down and didn't even review the checklist and actually forgot a couple things that were on the checklist. So the, like, if you're making a fucking checklist, no matter how simple or no matter how much you think you have shit down, follow the fucking checklist. Dummy, talking to myself here, follow the fucking checklist. Go back to the basics. Don't think you don't need to stretch or need to warm up. That shit will fuck you up. And we skipped some of those foundational things. We skipped the fucking basics. Go back to the basics. The basics are what wins the motherfucking war. The basics, the fundamentals... Or what wins the war? Even if the enemy might have a larger army, better technology, more weapons, more tanks, might have the high ground. Now, sure, all those things are desirable. Sure, you want to have all those fucking things. But you stick to the basics and fundamentals consistently over time through adversity and don't break from your basics through adversity. You win the fucking war. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Always go back to the fundamentals. The freak fundamentals. Our freak foundations. We didn't do it. Another lesson was, you know how you have success 
in, in almost anything physical or anything at all, like to keep you going, to keep you have the endurance and durability, all it takes is two things. And it was things that we, 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 we focused on in the Marine Corps so long, and it is basics. That's as basic and fundamental as it gets. The only two things you need to take care of to really be successful in combat is hydration and your feet. That's it. If you have those two things, you're in the fucking fight. You're missing those, you're going to be kind of fucked up. Hydration and your feet. We'd always have extra water. We'd always have ways of getting more water, purifying water, cleaning water, whatever I had to do, and always had extra pair of socks. Always had ways of taking care of the fucking blisters on your feet. Fucking blisters. Little bitch-ass motherfucking blisters. It's pathetic. We'll get into that in a second. But hydration and feet. Take care of those two things, and you'll always be in the fight. You'll always be in the game. It will give you the energy endurance to go for days and days and fucking an hour after hour, nonstop, all you need is fucking hydration and feet. Of course, you want other things, fuel and all the basics, fundamentals, you said about stretching and all this other stuff. But if you take care of hydration and feet, you are going to be good. You are going to be fucking set. That's what you need to worry about. The basics, the fundamentals, stick to it. If you have a checklist, if you don't have a checklist, make a motherfucking checklist in everything in life. You should have a process and a system for everything in life, even the basic shit. I have a morning routine. That I follow the exact morning routine every fucking morning. And yet I have a checklist that I check off every single morning to make sure I didn't miss anything. And we made the mistake of not following our checklist during this challenge. You, you, make, you don't have a checklist? Make sure you make a checklist. You don't have a system and process and an SOP, a standard operating procedure? Create one and then follow the motherfucker, you idiot. It's so stupid. And, and take care of your hydration, take care of your feet. Because everything inside works off of water. We're just a big fucking sponge. Literally and, phys and, and physically, we're a fucking sponge. So, take care of your feet. Another thing that was, you can call it a mistake or not a mistake, is we do these challenges without practicing them. We don't practice, we don't build up them, we don't train for them. We want it, it to be a fucking challenge. Because if I challenge for, if I practice for a 24-hour hike for like two, three months, it's not a fucking challenge. It's just another day at the park, another day walking through the hills. But we didn't hike like crazy. We haven't, I haven't hiked since the last project class. And the time before I was part of the project class before that. We just haven't made it to too many hikes lately. We knew we had this coming up, so we didn't do any hikes. We didn't practice for it. To make it a challenge. Like, find ways to test yourself. Find out who the fuck you really are. What you're really capable of. What are the possibilities? What are the capabilities? What is your real, true, peak fucking potential? What are you really made of? That's what you need to be thinking of. Who the fuck you really are. That's what you want to find out. If I practice for it, sure, I can practice for it. But that's not going to help me find out who I am then. Because I was practice, I was prepared. Of course, competition, all that. But looking for a challenge, looking for a freaking challenge, then I don't, need, I don't, want, to, I don't even want to practice. I want to find out. I want to be in the fucking pain. And speaking of, speaking of pain... The movie Major Pain, if you haven't seen Major Pain, you're not a fucking American, you need to go watch Major Pain. Fucking awesome, we just watched it recently the other day. And we now, have, we created in this, in, during this, I had the, the Major Pain effect, right? So I had a broken toe going into this challenge. Said so I'm going to be fucked up, I couldn't put on my hiking shoes, so I had to wear either running shoes that were not tied at all on the left side. I only could tie one part, I had to loosen up the lace as far as it would go because a foot couldn't fit in with a broken pinky toe. Just a pinky toe, a little fucking, looks like a little peanut. Little fat, nasty, rotten fucking peanut that an elf and shit out. All deformed and shit. But I, I couldn't put any, any hiking shoes on. I have all these great hiking shoes and hiking boots and hiking shoes. Trail running sneakers. None of them would fit over the fucking nasty toe. So I had to wear just running shoes that were completely loose. And then I would alternate that with a pair of fucking sandals. Like basically flip flops on the trail. Now, walking like that and, and not being able to put my foot into the hanging shoe because it was too much pressure and I'm a fucking pussy, it's, it's made me walk a little weird. I, have to, I would shift all the all weight onto the other side trying to uh, uh, protect the little bitch-ass motherfucking pinky toe. In turn, after about two to three laps, my right leg was already shot. My right knee was fucking jacked. My whole lower part of my leg was fucking swollen up from just leaning all my weight hobbling onto it. Go back to the basics. Go back to the fun. Be more efficient in shit you're doing. Because inefficiency led to fucking up that leg so much that it made me so much slower from the little fucking pinky toe. 
So the major pain test, going into this, had a little broken pinky toe, right? My elbow was fucking fucked up and tweaked. After a couple of laps, guess what? The pinky toe was fucking cured. Un almost unbroken. Forgot all about it because the different suffering and pain, different places overpower that. You forget about it. The pain receptors go somewhere else. Think about that. It's fucking crazy. It's crazy. And, and so now the knee is all jacked up. And now you're just saying, shit, I, I just started tightening up the sneaker on the foot because I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to. And the, now at that time, there's a blister. If I show you the blister, it looks like, I don't know what the fuck. Blisters all over his foot, like I'm talking globs of goo inside them. One of them has all this yellow squishy stuff inside. I'm ready to pop it. One is like purple and black on the foot because, and that was after a couple of laps because I was hot, trying to protect the little bitch ass fucking pinky toe. So, the, so the point is the major pain effect is if you saw major pain, he rip breaks their finger to make them forget they got shot in the leg because the pain just overpowers it. Is that shit ain't never as bad as you fucking think. Stopping a little bitch. Like, it pisses me off so fucking much that I was such a little fucking bitch over a little pinky toe, adjusting everything, making myself so inefficient the way I was walking, fucking up this leg. Like, my lower leg right now is still blown up like a fucking balloon from whatever, just swollen, from walking so fucking weird on it, which fucked up my knees and all this other stuff. And it's all fucked up because of switching my efficiency in my shoes, switching my efficiency in my technique and just gait and walk, that it fucked up Everything else that made everything much worse. And you forget all about the fucking pinky toe. So that leads into the next fucking lesson. And a huge one. Is when you have a little itty bitty problem. Like a nasty fucking pinky toe. Don't fucking stress over it. Don't go overboard trying to uh, accommodate the little bullshit. Little fucking speed bump. And create a thousand other fucking problems. Now I have all these other fucking weird shit going on. All these weird fucking blisters. Weird fucking knee feelings. Swollen fucking legs like a fucking a fat ass. Like this one leg is as fat as fuck right now. From a fucking pinky toe. And it pisses me off to like to have that such... The bitch ass fucking mentalities disgust me inside. That I let a little tiny thing like this, right? A little fucking nutshell shit out by a fucking elephant. Turn into this big... Big blisters and bubbles and, and fucked up shit on the other side from letting that tiny thing affect me. So don't let little fucking speed bumps, little problems in your life affect you and blow them out of proportion and waste so much time and energy and make yourself so inefficient and waste so much fucking time and it, mental and emotional and physical energy on shit that doesn't fucking need or deserve it. Just fucking forget about the stupid little problem and just fucking march on. I should have just put on the fucking hiking boots, wrapped them up, sucked up a little fucking pain in the pinky toe. And not walk like a fucking idiot and fucking up the other leg. And shit would have been fine. Don't let little problems become big problems. By overreacting. Stressing. Letting your emotions take over. Overthinking shit in your head. And then creating much bigger fucking problems. That's what we do in all areas of life. I'm not talking about just physically. I'm talking about in life. In business. In relationships. In all fucking areas of life. Fucking pisses me off. Pisses me the fuck off. So... Those are some of the main big take-home points. Control your damn body. Go back to the basics. Follow and prepare for your checklist. Don't get fucking complacent. Don't let little problems turn into big problems. Subdue your ego. Be willing to eat shit. Take one for the team. Put other people and other things above yourself. Share your struggles when you're on the internet. Not just always your fake bullshit fucking life with all your stacks of fucking cash and Lamborghinis that you fucking photoshopped into your picture and all this other bullshit. Have something above yourself. Have a fucking higher calling. So anyway, this was, you know, this was a, a, a fundraiser for charity for Save Our Allies fund, Foundation out in Afghanistan. And so we raised over $2,000, over $2,200 raised. We did 40 something miles. Over 300 sta uh, floor, floors climbed. And fucking got a shitload of blisters from being little bitches. And got so, but mo most importantly, there were human connections going on. Relations being built. People meeting for the first time that came on the hike with us that are now connected by going through this suffering. Because this shit, it, was fucking, it wasn't fucking easy, I'll tell you that. It was the hardest 24-hour challenge we did. We got some more challenges coming up. This is the hardest one we've done so far. Now we find something even fucking harder. And you know what? After we do these challenges, Tyson always says... Are we ever going to do that challenge again? And I always say after we're done, I'm like, fuck no. 
Fuck no, we're not doing that one again. But you know what? After we hit a good amount of challenges, maybe 2020, second half of 2022, or maybe 2023, we're going to redo every one of these fucking challenges. Fuck those challenges, motherfucker. Shit. That shit pisses me the fuck off. I'm going to do that shit barefoot next time. Fucking barefoot. That's how much it just pisses me off. Anyway, this was, again, about things bigger than yourself. It's about making those connections, helping each other out, lifting each other up, pushing each other, pressuring each other, building relationships, building connections with other fucking humans, putting the fam- your family first, putting other people and other things and other situations above your fucking self, realizing it's not about you, motherfucker. It's about the, this universe, about this rock we're spinning on. That's what the calling is. That's what the motherfucking calling is. That's what this is about. It was about the Save Our Allies Foundation. It was about starting with, finishing that final lap with the family. That's what this shit was about to me. It was about not stressing that I'm getting less laps and distance than the other people that I invited here. That's not what it's about. It's about all these lessons I'm talking about. It's about those moments alone when I'm marching in the middle of the night, pitch fucking black. That's what it's about. Those fucking lessons right there. Those thoughts. Those reflections. These lessons learned. This is motherfucking gold right here. Apply this stuff in your life. You'll, you'll be successful. You'll be happy. You'll be fulfilled. You'll make millions of fucking dollars. Or you can bitch and moan. Well, why would you do that? Why would you go and do that to your fucking leg? This is why. All these lessons are why. This is why everything we're talking about. This, this is why. So anyway... We need, I need to get rolling right now. I, I hope you took some lessons of this alone uh, uh, yourself. And even when you're hearing these lessons, let it spark other ideas and other thoughts and other lessons in, in, your, in your own mind. And if you have any questions or comments or want to get involved with any of the, the challenges or fundraisers that we do in the future, or you need any assistance in setting up these type of things for yourself, or you need help in your discipline, your energy, your confidence, being an action taker, being your freak fucking self in your mind, your body, and your business, send a private message. We could talk about OTD, Operate to Dominate, one-on-one, private, peak performance, accountability, personal development coaching for anyone anywhere in the world. We'll jump on the phone and see how we can help you out to operate to dominate in your life. And take your personal development to another level in your mind, your body, and your business. Or for men, we have the project, which is an in-person personal development program, a four-day program here, an event, live event, in-person held in Southern California. Where we're working on your family, your fitness, your finances, your faith to make you an even better husband, an even better father, an even better leader, and an even better motherfucking man. So send me a, a private message or a comment in the section around this video, and we will jump on the phone. We'll talk about it. We'll see which type of coaching program, one-on-one, or the project is right for you. I got to get rolling. I got to go refuel because you got me all freaked the fuck out on here talking about this stuff and got me pissed off. And guess what? After this, I I thought I was training hard before. The train's about to get ramped the fuck up. Stand the fuck by. Shit's about to get real. It's about to get fun. It's about to get crazy. It's a higher calling, motherfuckers. I got to get rolling in case no one told you yet today. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.